when we were chatting with the physiologists and trainers, they said that two of the most useful numbers they collect at the camp for the riders are their sweat rate and sweat sodium concentration. So out on the road, they're weighing them before and after certain sessions to look at how much sweat they're losing in terms of total sweat volume. They're also taking some sweat sodium measurements from samples that they've collected from the arm. Now some of the riders, those the ones that showed that they've got high sweat sodium losses in particular, they're looking to verify those results using the precision hydration sweat test at rest. That's what's going on behind me now because what this will help them to do is quantify exactly how much sodium is being lost and help them fine tune the drinks that they're taking in. This information gets used to determine which riders are going to use more or less of the electrolyte drinks versus the carb drinks alone. The red top bottles that they have on the bikes are the ones with sodium in them and the riders that are deemed to be more salty or have a higher sweat rate they're going to have more of those red top bottles versus the white top bottles which have just got the carb only drink mix in them. I'm sitting down with Jacopo because you've just had a sweat test done and this is quite an interesting result because um, the guys thought maybe your sweat was average to low but you thought it was high and we've just tested you and it shows that you are actually losing quite a lot of sodium in your sweat. So I was curious what, what had led you to think about the fact that you could be losing a lot of salt. Uh, you know, like uh, I'm quite few years I'm in the pro peloton, so I knew when uh, uh, hot temperature comes uh, to races, I usually like come up uh, the bus with uh, the jersey full of sweat, so it can stand by itself. You know, it doesn't need to be worn to stand in position. So uh, when the team come uh, come together with precision fuel uh, and uh, hydration, I was I was really happy because it's a it's a, it's a target. I think he often gets uh, not get enough attention from the teams. And uh, you know the most matter about uh, maltodextrin or fructose. Well, uh, I think hydration is is uh, fundamental, especially now that it's a summer sport. You know, so I'm happy to to find out the best way to to to, to defeat uh, the heat. I mean, I cannot beat the, the sun, but at least I can uh, face it by much more easier now. Yeah, definitely. We've got a few stories like that in the peloton now. We we tested Jan Bakelance a few years ago. He was very salty guy with a big sweat rate and uh, using the stronger salts helped him teach Benut as well. What kind of symptoms were you suffering in the heat? I heard you mention potentially some cramps and things like that. Yeah, cramps uh, was uh, not very often but it happened. Uh, the, the worst and the most simple is just drop of performance because actually uh, happened many times maybe uh, I would think about the Tour de France like starting with a super good feeling towards the first couple of hours then performance dropping over the end like it's normal to get tired by the ends, but not like a drop of about 50 watts on uh, struggling to hold in uh, 300 while uh, your threshold is uh, 420. So uh, hopefully this uh, this, uh, this study and and uh, and uh, precision fuel can uh, can help me out with uh, hydration. Yeah, because now I know the the team are running different bottles so that you can identify the ones with the different caps and get ones with more electrolytes in and that sort of thing. Um, are you also as well as taking in the the carbon electrolyte drink, are you using any of the hydration tabs or any salt capsules or anything like that or is, is how are you managing it? Uh, since you know in the race uh, we are now on a high high volume of uh, carbohydrates so it's much easier to, to just stick with the with the malto and sodium uh, powder and drinks and just keep the electrolytes before or after the race because uh, of course like to reach the goal of uh, maybe 100 or 120 um, carbs per hour it's harder if you're already drinking like I would say half a liter with uh, just electrolytes so uh, ideally we do a good charge of salt before and a good recovery after and normally should be fine. Yeah, that was the other thing I was going to ask you about. It's kind of the pre and post thing. I, I'm my sweat number. Your your sweat sodium is about 1500 milligrams per liter. Mine's about 1800. So we're both on that really high end. I really found personally that having a, a stronger, a high concentration salt drink before I did something really helped. But also having it afterwards to to help the recovery for the next day. Is that something you've played around with? Yeah, I always did. Like. Uh, let's say unintentionally before because uh, that's your feeling right and uh, so I think like yeah maybe like drinking a lot of salt before a race can maybe gives you an extra kilo because of course you're you're not sweating in the moment but uh, can give you I feel like in terms of uh, shape let's say or power output I think it's sometimes a benefit even if you're one kilo heavier sometimes like you can push way more because you're well hydrated and your muscle gets what they need. Yeah, exactly. It's a trade-off, isn't it, always? But a little bit of extra weight 
counters the fact you can push more power. So yeah, all good. Yeah, that's um, super interesting. So thanks for dropping by to do the test and I'm glad it seems to be helpful. Yeah, I hope so. It seems like so you're well prepared and yeah. looking forward for it. Thank you.